This has definitely been one of my best weekends of eBay sales. If we pull the table up, I've done $1,375 in revenue. You take out the fees, the post, and the cost of goods, it's been a $602 profit weekend. So $47 worth of an average sale price. These 29 items are definitely ones to be paying attention to because they're selling for some good money and they're selling on eBay right now. So I'm gonna dive into that. We'll be also jumping into the thrift as well for a bit of a dig. Hopefully we can find something in there and then I'm gonna show you some stuff that I'm thinking about for a video series here on this YouTube channel over the next couple of weeks. So plenty to get into today, fun episode ahead. Let's go dive into the first category, the DVDs. We've had some big, big winners in the DVD category this weekend, guys. Seven sales have come through, $283 in revenue, an average sale price of $40. So I spoke to my 30% clubbers on Thursday around this purchase. It was six seasons of SpongeBob SquarePants. I actually paid up at $4 a piece, but this one right here, seasons 9, 10, and 11, $56.99 plus $20 worth of international postage, a ripping sale. And then seasons three, four, and five, we got $50 for this one plus $20 worth of international postage as well. So $147 coming in those two, a huge bolo to be looking out for. Monty Python's Flying Circus, the complete series, we got that one done for $45. Uh, the TV show, The Castle, uh, we got that one done as well for $38 as a bit of a bundle. Uh, Daylight, uh, Sylvester Stallone there, that one sold for $19.50. Sliders for 19, Last Tango sold for 15. So some huge winners in the DVD space, so much money to be made. The shoe sales have been pretty strong as well, $274 coming in the shoe section. We had five sales and it worked out to $55 worth of an average sale price. The first one that I've got for you is a pair of Nike TR Fit 5s. Um, all my shoes I'm buying for around about $10. So I'm gonna say a cost of good of about 10 bucks for this. Um, it's sold for $40. So not too bad on a fairly entry level shoe. Um, this one as well, the big Merrill boot. Now Merrill is just such a great brand. That one ended up selling for $54. And then we've got a really cool shoe that I do love to find when I'm out in the thrift. We've got the Nike Internationalist. So these are a really sweet pair. Always sells pretty quick. Got a $55 sale price on that one there. A um, couple of other bigger winners as well. We have the Sense Boost, so the Adidas Sense Boost. These ones here, really cool pair of running shoes in great condition. They sold for $60. And then the last one, the best of the day, we had the Asics Tigers, the Gel Lethals. These footy boots are a really good boot to find. They sold for 65 bucks. So $274 in shoes, $55 average sale price, five pairs, not too bad. We jump into the clothing section now. We had a total of six sales come through and they're all tops and t-shirts. So this shouldn't take too long to run through. A total of $233 in revenue, an average sale price for the six sales of $39. So the first one that we've got here is an Insight t-shirt that I've had hanging around the house for quite a while. Got a $22 sale price in the end for that one. We've got Sonic the Hedgehog here, just a little, nice little embroidered front print. That one sold for $25. AD, ACDC, rock or bust. I know there's a bit of a line in there, but that doesn't matter. Came up fine in the photos and uh, got a really nice back print on it as well. So we've got a $29 sale price for that one there. No FX Australia 2014. Found this in the thrift for $4 with Jamie pre-Christmas. Um, that one ended up selling for uh, $42.50. That was a really good result on that one. The Geelong Windbreaker jacket, finally got this one to move after quite some time. A $55 sale price on this one here. Completely genuine, size large. And then we've got a Carhartt t-shirt, size medium, brand new with tags. $30 sale price plus $30 worth of international postage. Now, I've spoken a little bit on this channel over the last couple of weeks, certainly since the start of the year, about my shift into focusing on video games and video game consoles. I've done a lot of media last year, a lot of DVDs, and I realized that they were turning over quite well, but there is more money to be made in the video game category. And it wasn't like I wasn't doing video games, but I just thought I'd put a bit more time into it because there is a really good turnover rate and it's also a better ASP. So out of the video game section, which is gonna be a new category that we focus on in these what sold videos, I was able to sell 335 four dollars in five sales averaging 67 dollars per sale in this category so just justifies the reason why i'm trying to get into the space basically um two games sold individually and uh, the first one here is minecraft we got 20 dollars on the xbox 360 and i've got a 15 dollars sale here on modern warfare 2 as well for call of duty so often what i'll do is pull out the games that are copping up to be over 15 dollars of any bundles that i'll buy on facebook marketplace that's how i'm picking up all of these consoles um, and then i'm selling them off once the game have been taken out with a few extra games plus the console. So the other one that we've got here, this was actually bought at a garage sale. I've got the Time Crisis 3 game on PlayStation 2. Picked all of this up for 
$1,000 in a garage sale. We've got the gun here as well, completely genuine gun as well. Haven't been able to test this though, and I did put that in the listing, um, but the game and the gun, we ended up getting a $90 sale price on that one there, so not too bad for $10 spend at a garage sale. I've got a 250 gigabyte Xbox 360 Slim console here, and I've only got the connector cables. I don't have anything else with it. I just put the listing out for console only. We've got a $110 sale price on that one there. And then the last one is this Coles bag that I've got for you here. It's just a big bundle. I'll put some B-roll footage over the top for you here now, but this was a bundle where it was no controllers. I bought this one off Facebook Marketplace. It was just the console for the Xbox 360 plus five games. And I ended up getting a $99 sale price on that one there. I paid $60 last Wednesday night on Facebook Marketplace for it. I pulled out five really good comped games, sold them off individually. They are still yet to sell, but I've made my money back right there already with that $99 sale price on that 360 bundle. So a $67 average sale price, $334 in sales. That's why I'm gonna keep focusing on this category. Now, I'm still working away on my flea market haul from yesterday. I've been madly listing these street sharks up that I got off Danny at Gold Coast Picker. And um, look, he's got a lot of cool stuff. I'm happy to do this on consignment with him. We're working on some street sharks at the moment. And I'm really happy to say we've already had two sales come in overnight. So less than a 24 hour sell through rate. This guy was the first one that sold. He ended up selling for $90 plus $20 worth of international postage. He's off to Italy. And then the next one here is this guy right here. He ended up selling for $50 and we got $20 worth of international postage off to the USA. So these street sharks, all of them are comping anywhere between $50 to $160. Pretty sure this guy right here is worth about $160. So there's gonna be some great money in all of these once they go on to sell. I've still got to list these ones up, but very happy to get these two out the door. We actually had a total of six international sales come through over the weekend. This was another one as well, Twister DVD dance board game. Now it's brand new and sealed, and that's how I like to do my board games. Too many opportunities for missing pieces when you're buying pre-owned, in my opinion. We got a $37.95 sale price on this one here. $30 worth of international postage off to the USA. So I thought that was a really cool sale. We had two sales in the hat section as well. I've got a Tennessee Titans fitted uh, Reebok branded, uh, very genuine hat there. That one only sold for $18.95. I bought it for five bucks, probably not making too much money on that one there. And then we've also got this one as well. We've got the Bunnings Warehouse Fedora hat. This one was bought out of the Bunnings store for $5, sold on eBay for a bit of retail arbitrage for 30 bucks. Uh, you take out 10 bucks worth of postage and some fees. I've probably made myself $10 just buying it at the checkouts as I was leaving Buddings. So that should be 28 out of 29 sales. The last one that I've got for you though is an absolute banger. I've got this one here, which is the Canterwood Crest book series. I spent 25 bucks and believe it or not, this has gone on to sell for $125 in the space of just, I think three or four days worth of a sell through rate. So just a really big book series. If you can find that one there in multiples, you're gonna go on to do some pretty good money um, to get it done for 125 bucks to round out what has been an incredible weekend of sales. Pretty cool. Post has been dropped off. That took about two and a half hours to do today, those 29 parcels. It ended up being about six or seven different boxes. And I don't know, when I'm doing my shipping, the boxes just take a whole lot longer uh, to sort out. But we've dropped it off. It's about 12.30 now, so not too bad. All on schedule for what is so far a pretty good day. Um, I did just want to quickly mention around those boxes, I got a, a question on my channel uh, just around how to source free boxes because you don't want to be paying for them in Australia Post. So um, I normally go to Bunnings, which we're just driving past now, and I pick them up for free there. Um, there's always a really large supply. And the other one as well is what I've just done here today. I was able to get a heap out of Australia Post itself. The lady behind the counter, she knows what I do. I'm in there three times a week. And she said, would you like some boxes? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And they're all really good size and, and obviously they are for free as well. So I'm not having to have that expense. So um, just a quick little tip there for you guys. Just ask behind the counter at Australia Post when you're dropping your parcels off um, and you can stock up to, on some, uh, some free boxes. But uh, we're gonna cruise off into a couple of thrift stores now. Hopefully we can find a few items. I think today, I'm pretty good for stock. I've got quite a number of items, but I, I guess the, the process for me throughout this year is to try and source a higher ASP, as I was talking about a little bit when we did the what sold segment. So I'm gonna look for those higher end items that also have a really good sell through rate. Basically, 
I'm cherry picking in this little run that we're going to uh, go and do now. So let's dive into it. We'll see what we can grab. Hopefully, there's going to be a few for us. Hey guys, uh, voiceover Matt here. Just going to recap a couple of finds in today's little run. This Cobra Puma uh, golf hat actually goes for some good money. Didn't pick it up for three bucks. Just thought I'd put it into the video though. Um, really good little one to grab in the hat section. This one as well really did catch my eye. It just had the $4 price tag on it. This is the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sewer truck and it goes for some pretty good money as you can see there. We've got a $60 sale price. So um, just a bit of a fiddly one for me to, uh, to post off. So I did leave that one behind as well. The DVDs, well, I've got a bit of a story about that. So I'll let you know about that in just a second. But this one here, I found it worth about $25 and it was half price day, so paid 50 cents. That could have been a completely different story. You may have remembered in last week's episode, I walked into that same thrift store, pretty much same time, same day, and uh, I came away with about 45 different DVDs, profiting about $600. Today, he just brought in a brand new tub, but it had yet to be priced. So he had to go out the back, he had to price it all up, and I was waiting, I was sitting there going, hurry up, mate, I just want to sift through what you've got. And I was only able to find this Elvis DVD that was sitting on the shelf in the meantime. So 50 cents into what will be about 25 bucks, that's okay, but geez, we're about half an hour too short on uh, being able to sift through a whole new box of DVDs and probably come away with exactly what we did last week. So a little bit frustrating there, but I am at one more different thrift store here. We're going to jump into that one. Hopefully we come away with some goods. Geez, I thought the op shop ladies had found me some absolute gold here for $12. The brand is a fish named Fred, RRP of $189, but I priced it up on eBay and there was absolutely nothing doing. And to be honest with you guys, that is all I could find in this thrift store. I tried okay, but we only got the one DVD out of those two op shops. Pretty disappointing. The reason why though is because I'm working away on these numbers and that's why I'm trying to be really strategic about what I purchase. I've got these numbers set in place, $40 average sale price throughout the year. So far this year, I'm actually now averaging $44.50. That figure's actually going really well. My sourcing is definitely on point. Sell through rate, 65%. Well, I've sold 124 items out of 183 listings. So my sell through rate's actually 65% at the moment. It tells me that what I'm buying is actually going on to sell. And my 15 listings a day, well, if you add all of that up, I'm actually 57 listings short of where I should be. I'm doing about 11, I need to be doing about 15. But that provides a bit of context there on the numbers front on why I'm actually looking for these items that are comping up to be a really nice profit, a really nice sell through rate and a really nice average sale price. So unfortunately it was just the one today but I'm really happy that I'm being very strategic about things. So guys I'm sure you can relate to that. We've all got it excess stock, bad buys, stuff that we've got lying around the house. It might be listed, it might not be listed. In my case, all of this stuff is definitely listed on my eBay store, but it's well over a year. I've done a bit of an inventory uh, cleanse over the holiday period, and all this stuff here is dormant stock that is just lying around the house and it just won't move. So I'll be going out over the next five weeks to flea markets, to garage sales, to pawn shops, basically to try and get rid of this as cheap as I possibly can. It's going to be a five-part video series that documents the journey of getting rid of bad buys. And I think it can relate to all of you guys. We've all got the bad buys. We all learn as we go. And all of this stuff that kind of gets left on the wayside, we can actually go back to and we can do something about it to try and recoup some money. So I'm happy that I bought this stuff because it's taught me about the good things that I should be buying. But I want to actually get onto this and I want to actually make some decent money so I can go back and buy more of this stuff. So you're going to come along for the ride with me over the next five weeks. I wanted to save for the end of the video my 30% clubbers that stick around to the end. It's going to be a big video series and it's going to be relatable and hopefully it's going to help you guys do the exact same thing with your piles. But it'd be cool to get your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think I should go and do first? Should I go to the flea market and set up a stall? Do you think I should open up a garage sale? What would be the best way to clear the stock the quickest first? Um, or should I go to a pawn shop and see if I can flip it off there? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. If you've got any other ideas about how I could move this dormant stock, um, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm gonna go and list up more of these guys because they're making me some really decent money. I've already had two sales as you would have seen from earlier in the video. So got a few more to list. I'm gonna get into that now and try and hit my 15 listings a day like I need to be doing for my numbers. So appreciate you being here, guys. Uh, I'm gonna leave you with a video right here, which is my trip to the thrift from last Thursday where I'm buying this really good quality stock that's selling for a great price. So if you wanna learn about what to buy to sell for that higher average sale price, go and check out that video there. Appreciate you guys, my 30% clubbers. You guys are the best. We'll see you soon.